Thank you, Lord. So we just say thank you. Thank you, Lord. For all those promises, for what you've spoken to our hearts. For leaving the things that we see as needs. Lord, we just say thank you. That you said in your word that you'd provide. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for the answer. Thank you for the help. Thank you for the favor. Thank you for the wisdom. Thank you for the encounter with my children. Thank you for meeting with us here today. Lord, thank you. Thank you for preparing good things for us today. Thank you, Lord, for calling us worthy. Thank you. Lord, we honor you today in this place. Thank you that we can meet with you. Let us coming today is not just a show. It's not just something, a tradition. But it is to meet with you, to hear from you. To be changed. And so we just say, Lord, have your way in our hearts today. Give us eyes that see. Give us ears that hear. And a heart that understands. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. Grab a chair this morning. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, media team. Thank you, Lord. All right. Well, I know I'm glad to be in church. I'll tell you, um, and I know you are too. Uh, I, what I'm so thankful is, is that not only do we get to gather, but that the Lord shows up. You know, um, that, that's huge. I'm really like feeding back up here, or like I'm really hearing myself strong. Uh, maybe not out there, but really here. And uh, so maybe, maybe adjust that a little bit. Um, I'm really excited about Easter, especially because of this, this what, what the Lord has put on, 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 on my heart to, to share um, and what every person that's going to sit in here uh, is going to get an invitation. To, you know, and I'm really excited about that. And uh, next week I'll talk a little bit more about that. But I, I believe it's just going to be uh, just a great encounter and a very, very clear decisions for for Christ, and um, I'm just excited about that. So anyway, get excited with me, all right? Um, I'll tell you what, we're in the series, we're, we're, we've just been talking a lot about prayer, and I, I believe the Lord has been highlighting on this, not just in a three-week series, but I think in, the, in what is to come and to continue. Uh, the, the Lord wants His people to pray. Matter of fact, you know, a lot of the nation, a lot of the things, the places in which we live, the Lord tells us if we pray for our leaders, then we'd live this godly and, and peaceful life, all right? The Bible says that, that if my people will pray, He said, if they will humble themselves, right? In other words, that they would see that their need, you know, so many times in America, uh, especially in America, we are so, uh, we have so much stuff, we don't, we, we don't really have to be humble, Right? Because we have what we need, right? And so we, 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 we don't have to humble ourselves and we don't have to seek the Lord's face until all of a sudden uh, all hell breaks loose in our life, right? Or, or, or like the war comes, you know, to our house, right? That's when we seek our... Let me tell you, the war is at your house right now. Whether you know it or not, the war is at your house and there's strategies and there's, uh, there, there's things being laid against you uh, or, you know, and, and thought, thoughts, how can I trip them up? How can I steal? How can I kill? How can I destroy them? How can I do that to your children? This is, this is the enemy. Matter of fact, just this week, we heard, I heard uh, just horrible, horrific things about the enemy. Listen, we're at war. About people, people uh, you know, just death, still kill and destroy. I'll tell you what, it's important for us to know that we are at war. And I, it's so also important to know this, that the war that we face, we're well equipped to win. We're well equipped to win. And, and, you know, the Bible says in Ephesians that he's given us, you know, this armor, this armor to fight a battle that's not against like just the natural things, but it is against the spirit realm. And you, you, so many times we, you know, we, we don't give, uh, we don't acknowledge what's going on behind the scenes. How many of you know what I'm talking about? We, we just, we address what, what hurts at the moment. We address what we see. We, 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 we you know, we shake our fist at, at, at the people. We, all these kind of things. But there's something going on behind all of these things. 
all of these things. And so God has given us uh, weapons to fight. And so we looked at, we've been, t- we talked about the armor of God for like weeks, right? Weeks and weeks. And I, and I just, I wish I could keep talking about that. But here we are now in talking about prayer and talking about spears. In Ephesians chapter 6, it tells us this, that he tells us to put on the full armor of God, Ephesians six twelve, And then after he goes through all of the armor, he says, pray, pray. If you put up Ephesians 6, let me go, pull up my notes here. Uh, Ephesians 6, make sure I can get on the right place. Ephesians 6, verse 18. He says, pray in the spirit at all times. And you know, we talked about this, just a little bit of a review. Pray in the spirit. Pray with your helper at all times. A lot of times when we pray, we don't really see it be, as being very powerful. We don't realize that pray with the spirit. Like we think the mountain in us, it's the, that's the battle right there. I want you to know there's somebody else in the battle. But it's our job to release him. And we do that with, with the words of our mouth. Like the will of God on this earth is contingent upon how much of, his, of our will we'll let him have. I'll say that again. The will of God here on this earth. People ask, well, well if, God's, if God's good, then why, you know, what about, you know, if the Lord will. Listen, the will of God on this earth uh, here's, let me give you some of his will. I'm not willing that any would perish, okay, but that all would find eternal life. But the will of God here on this earth, the, he, he, he talks about himself. He's good, okay? He, he, the Bible says that he is, he's able. Like all these things, he's, he's good and he's able. He's all these things, but the will of God on this earth is contingent upon how much of my will I'll let him have. And this is prayer, See, the will of my will is released by my words. My will. This is why he tells us to pray, because the, the, the rain from heaven is the same way, you know, rain from the clouds doesn't happen without evaporation or a release of what's in the earth. Listen, the will of God does not come, and this is what the Bible teaches, and you'll, you'll find that when your mom prayed, and when your grandma prayed, and when your dad, let's just change that all together. Let's say, when the men prayed. How about we change that? How about I have a praying dad? Huh? Let's have a praying dad. We had this whole section full last night of, of dads and their sons. I'm telling you, we got some praying, some praying dads. But when, when, when there's a prayer that go, goes out, there's something that, that, that there's a saving, there's, a, there's an ability, there's an assistance on that young man or that young daughter's life. Listen, I, I want to encourage you even this morning, those prayers that you prayed for your children, they're working. But we got to see it as prayer as something that's powerful. It's powerful. And so here he says this in Ephesians chapter 6, that he says, pray in the Spirit at all times. At all times. And we, we titled this series Spears because it's the one piece of the armor that, that Paul doesn't mention by name, but yet he's referring that, that there's something about prayer that goes out ahead of you. And he says, pray at all times. And then to this end, stay alert and persevere in your prayers for all the saints. Pray also for me, for, for whatever I open my mouth that I might speak, uh, that I might declare the, the gospel with, 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 God, with divine utterance. In other words, the, the words that I would speak would not just be what I know, but that it would be what God is saying at the moment. Because what God is saying at the moment is a, is a word that's been sharpened to penetrate even your heart, even my heart. Thank you. He's saying, pray that when I go into Asia, pray when I go to this church, pray that when I go to this place, that I would have the ability to speak words that are straight from heaven. Not just what I know. You know, we know a lot of things. You know, we know about the Word. We know some things about the Word. But you know, some of the things that how the Lord told us that we're to be a witness, right? We're to, be, we're to testify of what God has done. We need, we need Him involved in that conversation, not this. We need this involved, our heart. And so, so Spears is what we titled this series or just those little three weeks we've been talking about because there are, there are prayers go out ahead of us. I was talking to my, my son the other day about our words and how, you know, you can never outrun your words. Like, if I say something, I can't catch it. Right? Like, it's fast. Listen, my words are, 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 are my, my prayers are, are the, it's not, my, let me tell you what my prayers is not. My prayers are not my thoughts. They're not. My prayers 
is the release of my will, my mouth. I have to open my mouth. A lot of times we, we're praying, but really we're thinking. You believe, the Bible says, you, you're going to say something. You know, we talked about this, your faith, if it's not strong enough we, uh, to move your mouth, it's probably not going to move that mountain. Because cause if you believe, if you believe that you're confident, it's not just this, it's this wishing. You know, we've never been taught to wish. We've been taught to ask. You tell your kids if they need something, you tell them, well, I just wish you would wish for it. Right? No. Just wish for it. No, ask. Well, how, how am I to know? Ask. But we got to see, we got to see this, we got to see prayer as powerful as it is. That it, it, it's so powerful. And, and I want to go, we're going to continue on last week's message where, that, that, that why, why is it then that we don't pray? And this is not a, a message that says, you need to pray more. This is the message for hopefully you and I would see the power of prayer and what God has given us as a tool. And it's not like you need to. It's like, hey, hey, show me how. Hey, I'm going to get there because my endurance in prayer my continuation in prayer is under, me understanding that when I pray, it's, it's in the now. It's the fact that right now, when I pray, something's happening. Like, you won't continue to pray if you don't realize that something right now, when you're praying, is happening. There is a release happening now. Like, when I pray, there's a release. The same way when I talk, I'm releasing something. When I release, when I pray, and let me just remind you this, that prayer and God's prayer godly prayer would be this it includes it always includes the will of God or the word if you ask anything according to my that's that that is a huge piece of prayer that is a piece that so many times goes over overlooked and we just ask God for things that that might not be according to his will or we ask God without finding out his will or we don't ask and we just say Lord your will because we don't want to address that we're not in faith, or we don't want to address that we don't believe you, but that's just kind of like, you know, throw it up there. Throw it up there. Well, Lord, whatever your will. No, he gave you his will. We've got to see that it's as powerful as this. Actually, Joe Nichols um, brought these uh, spears. I, I wish I would have uh, known about these earlier. Uh, these spears, I'm not going to throw it. See that mountain over there? All right. Um, it's pretty cool. And this one's really sharp. Yeah, he said, watch out. Watch out. This is sharp. It's sharp. And it goes out ahead. It's kind of like a sword on a stick. A sharper. It's kind of a, what do you call it, a two-edged sword? You know, God's the Bible talks about in Revelation when Jesus comes back, he has a sword in his mouth. This is like a sword, but yet it's got this on it so it can be thrown. So it can go out in advance. And I, I want to wrap up this, this morning. I want to talk the last part. There's, I went through five things, and I'm going to do a little bit of review, but I really want to talk about hitting the spot. You know, not just like, you know, just... Like, what are you asking for? What are you believing for? Hold on, hold on. <clears throat> What's the cause of that? Right? So, like, if the noise is happening, you're going to unplug the radio. Right? Or you can put a pillow over your head. If the alarm's going off, what are you going to do? You're going to shut the alarm off. In other words, you're going to find the cause of the sound. Listen, there's a cause. There's a cause to a lot of the crud that's going on in your life. But we're addressing, we're not addressing the cause. You know, our prayers should be directed, if we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, our prayers and our authority, this is what we're going to talk about, our authority should be used upon the enemy. And we do it with a spear. It's a great spear. But you know how the enemy sees the spear? He sees it like this. And this is an actual replica based upon the measurements and the size and the weight of Goliath's spear. So you might, 
just maybe understand why David and all the army was a little bit afraid of this giant. This is what the enemy sees that you have in your hand. But you know what you, you and I often see? Like a toothpick that we sharpened ourselves. No, there's something on the end of it. It's not just you and your mountain. And this spear, I mean, this is big. It's heavy. But this, is, this is, would be representative of what you carry. But let me tell you, when you throw it, you have assistance. Because, see, I can't do this on my own. Even in your, your, your desire to pray, like, you can, you can chalk it up on, on, your, on your, your belt. You can put a notch on there that you pray. But let me just say this. If your prayers are working, it's because the Lord has beckoned you to come, to pray. And I, I believe this. There's a lot of calling going on. My arm's getting tired holding this. <laughs> I'm going to put it right here. Oh, hey, good call. Yeah. Prayers are powerful. Oh, how about this? Prayers are weighty. Prayers. So let's, let's go talk about why is it that you and I don't pray. Because the enemy knows this, that if, if we're in a battle, our prayers are our communication. Our prayers are, uh, it would be in the sense how we get the help from above. And he knows that if you have help from above... That Well, number one, he's no match. He's defeated. So, number one, why do we not pray? Why do we not pray? Number one, uh, I, I, five things. So if you're going to you take a note, you might write this down. Desire for self, or self-sufficiency. So I, I, I'm going to tell you why we don't pray, or like what is the cause and why is it, okay? Self-sufficiency. Why is one of the reasons we don't pray? It's not just self-sufficiency. It's the, our desire for self-sufficiency. We talked a little bit about this last week. What do I mean? We pray for yearly bread instead of daily bread because we want to not have to trust in the Lord, right? How many of you had the thought, man, Lord, if you just give me the, give me the lottery ticket numbers, <laughs> if I just, I just give me the Powerball, I mean, let me on my own, just give me the last one, somebody, come on. You know, it's at this many mil. I don't know, I mean, we made these prayers because we want to be self-sufficient because we don't want to have to trust because that makes us vulnerable, that makes us dependent and, and, and everything about us. And I think even in America, even more, you know what we, we're proud of? What are we proud of? Our what? Independence. We can do it ourselves. We can take over the world ourselves. We can help the world ourselves. We're all powerful. There's actually a danger in that kind of pride. And, and, and complete celebration of complete independence. I'm not saying not of uh, tyranny, independent from tyranny. I'm talking about just the, there's that ditch that the enemy would love to swing us where we can do it ourselves. You know, like when you turn 18, pff, I don't need you, deuces. <laughs> right, mom, dad? I'm going to go my way. My life would be a whole lot better if it wasn't for you, da 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 now I can go, no, 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 no. Independence is, is actually, the Bible says, that how the enemy devours. Isn't that what he said? He said he's roaming around, seeking who can devour. He wants to isolate. That's what independence is, isolated. So that's one of the reasons we don't pray. It's not even just because of self-sufficiency. It's because of our, literally, a desire, a desire, a prayer for self-sufficiency. Okay? I'm not saying that you shouldn't have more than enough to give under every good work. I, I believe that all the way. But I believe that you, understand, you and I understanding, and you're, you're my prayers. When the Lord teaches us to pray, in Matthew chapter 6, he says, give us this day our daily bread. That that should be a part of our prayer. Amen. That we would recognize every day that it's his strength. It is his, it, it is his assistance that's carrying me. It's, it's his breath. It's his everything. So number one is our desire for self-sufficiency. Number two is shame. We talked a little bit about that last week. Shame. We talked uh, talking a little bit about this last night too, but shame—it's um, it, a powerful thing. 
it, it's a powerful thing. It's, it's, a word, it's, a, it's a voice to ourselves that, that, that we don't measure up. Or who do you think you are? That you're not good enough? Or, or, or who do you think you are? That you could come and talk to the Lord in prayer and that he would answer that. Or the shame in that you're not good enough and you don't measure up, right? So there's the shame, and so we say this, how can I or I don't deserve it? But the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians, it tells us that Christ has made us right with God. 1 Corinthians 1.30 Christ has made us right with God. That you might underline that circle. It's Christ has. Christ has. You know, when, he, when, when God sent his son, he didn't say, well, I, I'm going to send my son because I, they're perfect and I want to save them. No, he didn't measure us. What did he do? He, he called us something. He called us valuable. He called us worthy. And so this is why he came. And this is the difference between the law and, 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 and Jesus. Uh, yeah, the law shows us and measures us according to our, our weakness. And you know what? We should see how, in, in, in our, how great our inability is. But, but what causes uh, the, our empowerment is seeing how great the, the Father's love that he would bestow upon us, that he didn't come and measure us. He came and said this. He said, you're not perfect, but you're worthy. You're not perfect. You're worthy. And the only reason I am righteous is because of the blood of Jesus. The only reason, I have, I have no right. I have nothing apart from him. And so that what happens is, is there's a love that's built and, 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 and an empowerment. But he says this, um, again, so <clears throat> shame. Uh, he, you know, there's this, there's the, why, why don't we come? Shame. Why, why don't we pray? Shame. How can I? I don't deserve it. But I, I think the Lord would just want us to do this. He would just want us to enter the conversation of love. Just enter the conversation of love. So this will end shame. Enter the conversation of love. Listen to what he has to say and you talk back. Listen to what he has to say and you talk back. I want you to see this in Psalms 91. Psalms 91. Maybe you've read the 91st Psalm about protection. But in verse 14, this is God talking back to David. He says this. He says, he set his love upon me. Because he set his love upon me. No, did it say because he was perfect? Huh? Did it say because he had everything together? Did it say because he knew everything, every scripture? Does it say because he got in the word every day? What did it say? Because he set his love upon me, I'll deliver him. Well, wow, there's, some, there's some confidence right there building. Because it was because of, listen, you setting your love upon him. This is this entering of a covenant, of a relationship. This is what happens in marriage. You, you set your love upon one another. I do. Well, you da 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 and you exchange these vows, and then you turn to the bride, right? You tend to talk to the groom, you turn to the bride. And so, there, and so you know, it's interesting, even in the wedding vows, you know, I've, I, I, being a pastor, I've gotten to do more and more weddings. And uh, it's interesting, I'm always talking to the guy first. I think it's interesting that Jesus declared his love to us first in his vows. What if, what, just imagine this, you're up here, pastor, you know, John? Do you take, I do, to hold her, and he writes his own vows, and then I look over to Beth, and I say, Beth, do you? And, and she goes, <laughs> not that. I mean, as long as you take care of me, as long as uh, you give me everything I want, as long as, because what, what you'll see is that I'm going to set my love upon myself. We've got we to determine today where are we setting our love. This is huge concerning, concerning coming. Because if our love is on ourselves, our eyes will be on ourselves. And if our eyes are on ourselves, the voice of shame will carry much volume. Okay? So Psalm 91, he says that because he set his love up on me, I will deliver him. Because he knows my name, I will protect him. When he calls out to me, I will answer him. Yeah, but you don't know how dirty I've been. Because he set his love upon me. Yeah. Just tell him you love him. Yeah. Lord, I love you. Thank you. Listen, you got to hear what he says. And he didn't say you're perfect. He said you're worthy. You're enough to come for. You're enough to give my son for. You are, you're worthy. That means you're worth a lot to him. You're so valuable that he would not spare. Listen, like he would spare no expense. That he would send his own son, Jesus. 
Shame keeps us. Love draws us. When we understand love, when we understand love, he says, I'll deliver him. Or he says, I'll answer him. He says, I'll be with him in trouble. The trouble that you got yourself in, I have no right to pray. I saw somebody post something that said, what would Jesus do? And then there was like this other race next to it. There was like A, B, C, D, F, G. Like, well, Jesus probably wouldn't have got himself in this situation. And they're like, well, you know, as letter acronyms or whatever. And, I, and, and I'm thinking, yeah, that, that's real helpful. You're probably right. You're probably right he wouldn't have got himself in that situation. Now you're probably right. You are exactly right. But you're missing a big piece. You're missing a big piece that he says, I'll deliver him from trouble. The trouble I got myself in. The trouble that I got my own self in because I ate like this, because I smoked like this, because I did this like this, because I slept with this, because I blah, 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 blah. Because I didn't raise my children the way that, 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 that I should have, and I said no, and, and I was weak, and, and, and I caved to other things, and all these things, and now I'm in a heap of trouble. I can't call on you. I did it to myself. Yeah, keep sell, selling that line to yourself. Keep selling that line to yourself, and don't, don't, don't allow, listen, keep talking that line, and, and the Holy Spirit all the time, the advocate, this just means the, the, your attorney, the one that would tell you, shut up, he'd say, shut up, he'd say, stop, quit, declare the blood of Jesus, declare the blood of Jesus, Lord, I know, and declare your love to the Father. See, when you declare the blood of Jesus, what happens is a love for the, for, for the Father that sent His only Son to you just swells up. Listen, I, my kids don't have to be perfect. You, you, he's not looking. You got to, hey, listen, they're mine. They're mine. You're, you're His. You're His. If, if you give, it doesn't say if your father, if you're being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more does my father have? It doesn't say if you being evil know how to give good gifts to only your perfect child. Like, there's not stipulations there. Do you see stipulations? No, you see you being evil know how to bless your children. Where, no matter where they've been. No matter if they're in jail and you tried to help them get out five times and they're there again. Your love, your heart, your hope, your desire for them. I'll be with them in trouble. I will deliver him. Whoa, whoa. Can you have these up here? Uh, Psalms 91, 14 through 16, BB, BSB, Berean Study Bible. <clears throat> he says, because, uh, the, uh, let's go on to verse uh, uh, verse 15. He says this, I, I, I will be with him in trouble and I, I will honor him. Wow. I'm not worthy of honor. It says who? This will keep you from coming. So keep you from coming. He says that with long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. I, guys, there's so much here that, that you could just highlight, circle, camp out and just let the Lord talk to you. Because you set your love upon him, he'll be with you in trouble. But so number three, um, <clears throat> distracted. One of the, the number three reasons that we keep ourselves from, oh, gee, I just saw the time on my computer. Um, we get distracted. We get distracted. Uh, and this is one of the reasons we don't ask the Lord in prayer. Because here's what happens. It says in John 15, 7. Put it up there, if you will. It says, if you abide in me, right? And my words abide in me. You might underline or circle this. You shall ask. This is what will happen. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. In other words, if you're not distracted and you're not such a, on such a busy pace of life that, that you'll find yourself in his word, what will happen is you will ask. Last night I got to talk with uh, a gentleman at the, at, at, like after everybody was gone and, and um, in the series, I think the week one, we were talking about intimacy with the Lord in prayer and, and not hearing his voice. And, and the Lord really spoke something real strong. It was a strong word that, that the reason you struggle to be intimate, which is an exchange, intimacy is an exchange. The reason there's no I I intimacy or an exchange is because of your, your and my lack of lordship. 
In other words, that I'm not surrendered. It's not your way. It's not, Lord, I look to you for everything. It's like, I got this, right? And, and so what came out of that was it was like the Lord, he, he was like the Lord said, boom, that's what it is. That's what it is. That's why you're struggling. That's why it's your lack of lordship. You're not hearing the way you need to be hearing, the lack of lordship. And boom, the light just came on. And God found him like in a moment, and some things were coming down the pike that he didn't know about, but God did. And God found him with that word. God found him with that word, and he said, he said I made that adjustment, and, and I found myself uh, surrendered to what he's saying. I began to open my mouth, which I struggled to do, you know, and I'm in my truck on my own, and, and God did amazing things. Oh, I wish I could get, I could, you could just hear that testimony. It might just... Like a fully, like I heard it last night. But he says, if you abide in me, my words abide in you, you shall ask. And this testimony was about him asking. Asking the Lord concerning his wife. Asking the Lord concerning the situation. Asking the Lord concerning his in-laws. I, thought, I heard that. Ask the Lord concerning your in-laws. Ask the Lord. He says, if you will, you will ask. This is why we're distracted we're distracted. This is one of the reasons we keep from praying. And, and the enemy is so sure to get you and I what we need. Like, in other words, God, keep us busy. Got to do this. I need to do this. I need to do this. I need, I need. He's going to make sure you get uh, some need tos. Got to, I need, I need, I need, I need, I need, I need. And need, and need, and need is, is running our lives. All right? All right. So, you will ask in the word. Number four is this. We didn't really hit on this last week. Um, lack of confidence. Lack of confidence. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's not imitate. And the reason we have lack of confidence is because our, of our ignorance. Okay? So, if, if you, we don't come to pray because we don't, have, we, don't, we, we don't have confidence. We don't have confidence that what we ask would would be done, even though the Bible says this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his word, it will be done, right? This is the confidence that we're to, we're to have. But the reason we don't have that confidence is because we don't have according to his word. So there's ignorance. And you know, sometimes it's, it's intimidating to learn. Well, no, really, it's not intimidating to learn. It's intimidating, and maybe you're here this morning, it's intimidating for you to learn compared to pastor. Like how much of the word you're going to know compared to me. It's intimidating to learn compared to somebody else that you might hold as knowing more than you. And, and so you go to pastor, or you go to your friend that's spiritual. Let me tell you, you are spiritual. Um, but you go to these people because you trust that their ability, and you have no confidence in your ability, well, because you just don't know how. Because you just don't know that you'll be heard. You just don't, there's just no confidence there. There's no confidence there. Let me tell you this. The way you build confidence is this. Learn. Learn. You can't cook? Well, let's try. Let's begin to cook. Let's begin to put some eggs. And my, my, my little guy, he always wants eggs, and I was asking me to cook eggs. Well, so you know what I end up doing? I am teaching him to cook eggs. Now he cooks eggs. If I could teach him to clean the pan. <laughs> Give him some confidence in that, right? <clears throat> God, it's true, but anyway, so, you know, when, when, once you've learned it, and you own it, there's confidence there, and it's not intimidating to learn, it's intimidating when we have to learn compared to, like if, 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 some, if you're trying to maybe dribble the ball between your legs, right? at practice, and maybe you're a big man, like in other words, a, a, like a forward or a center. And so all your growing up days, they had you under the basket working on, you know, mic and drills and, and catch the ball and up and unders. And now they put you on the line and you're supposed to be doing this right here. And you haven't practiced this. And the ball's like over here. And then the ball's over here. And your face is turning red because of the voice of shame that I'm not as good as them. So it goes back to ignorance that now that it turns into shame, and therefore he's just got you locked up. But you know, if you were in your driveway, hey, mom, look. Right? You, you may not be able to do this. No one told you you had to do this. But you got this down, right? 
Because it's not intimidating to learn when, you, when, when you're with him. This is what's so wonderful. He, he said, the Lord says this, come to me. Jeremiah 33. He says, 33, 3, he says this, come to me and I will show you. I'll show you. I'll show you, listen, I'll show you some, what is it? Great and mighty things. I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll show you. You don't have to know it all. Listen, if you would just do what you know, what you don't know wouldn't matter. Like we wait to start, we wait to start praying, we wait to start going, and the Lord says like, go. I've given with you what you know. I said, go to that land. Do that. Yeah, but I need this and I need this. No, 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 no. You just need to be aware that it's not you in the mountain. It's you and me. With, and there's nothing too hard for me. And he'll remind you of those things. Oh, thank you, Lord. Let's go to the last one, and I want to wrap up with this one. The reason, the last reason that, that I had written down why we struggle to pray is because Satan is after your tongue. There is, there is uh, maybe you've heard this said about <clears throat> uh, guys, especially men, this, men nowadays, they're quiet. And we've taught that quiet is strength. It's actually a lie. Our quietness is a lot of times our weakness, our weakness, and, um, and so we struggle to speak, and the reason we struggle to speak is because there is an enemy that's trying to keep us shut up, because he knows that if you hold a spear is one thing, but for you to release a spear is a whole nother deal, a whole nother deal. He knows that you're dangerous. So, so maybe I tell somebody, danger, right? I mean, come on. You're dangerous. You're dangerous. I don't know where that came from. But I want to I just hit on this, this piece that the Lord was showing me just uh, real quick. You know, we, we talk about this, this, this quote for, uh, out of Isaiah about Jesus coming, and, and it says, and the government will be upon his shoulders. What does it mean to be the government will be upon his shoulders? Well, well, we are ultimately we know we this that God or Jesus is the he's the what the head of the church. So who's the shoulders? Huh? So the 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 reigning or the enforcement is upon his shoulders, and you say no, no, that's talking that it was on Christ. Okay, well, uh, <clears throat> Jesus went to hell, took back the keys of authority, and he gave them to us. So now combat that one. T -t -t Talk to me about that. Talk to me about how, how God, in, in Genesis, he told us to, to reign over the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, subdue this, reign, reign. Jesus came back and he went to hell and took back authority and dominion. And he tells the church, he says, hey, whatever you bind, tells Peter, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whoa, like when you read that. Read that. Whatever you bind on earth, let it be bound in heaven. It'll be like the, the heaven's assistance. Not just that, I think you could read into that verse a little bit more that it's not just bind on earth what's bound in heaven, but bind on earth will be bound in heaven. In other words, what you don't see, that the enemy's afraid. He's afraid. And the Bible, and he, right after that, and, and I, I wish I could throw up the verses there, but I, I, just because of uh, it, uh, time's sake, I don't I don't have it. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. This was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. I tell you, you are Peter, and upon this rock, this revelation, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell will not be able to hold, like the gates of hell. In other words, there's these walls, cities, these gates. This is, we, would be territory that they would occupy. And there's territory that, that was given by Adam to, to Satan on this earth. And Satan holds and he occupies. But Jesus says, hey, listen, the gates of hell, the cities, the Jerichos, the, the strong places that the enemy has rocked and, and owned, he says, those gates, they won't prevail. What would you do? Remember those battering rams? You've seen it. You've watched Lord of the Rings or whatever, they, these old movies, or they'd have these big battering rams. Where did they go to get entrance into the city, to take over the city, to own the city? Listen, to occupy till he comes. 
What do you use? You go through the gates. And the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Listen, you're dangerous. And, and the enemy knows if he can keep your mouth shut. If he can keep you from expressing your will where you found God's promise. And you said, you said this. And you said, Lord, you said this. And this is my desire too. And something would happen that, that, that what would be bound on earth would also be bound in heaven. That there would be even a binding of what you wrestle against. Not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of wickedness in high places. Ephesians 6. So our prayers, if we understand right now when we pray, they're powerful. You know what we'll do? We'll pray. I'll put it this way. I'm, I'm going to close with this statement. There are too many stop signs and speed limit signs and truths that you and I have had put up in our life that have gone unattended. Here's what I'd say. Pick up the spear. Enforce. Enforce the speed limit. Enforce Satan's defeat of shame. Enforce uh, the curse. To the blessing. You know, I got a curse on my family. You maybe heard people say that. You know, we cur- you know, like it's just a family curse, a gener- generational curse. That'll stick in the stage. It's sharp. It also sticks somewhere else. So how do you pray? How do you pray? Satan, take your hands off my child. Hit the spot. Spirit of depression, take your hands off my my husband. Take your hands off. Stand in the gap. And that, that's, what, that's what would happen. And one of the things we talked about at the beginning, the spearmen would be in the back, and they'd run forward through the gaps. And they'd come, and they'd see as they approach. And you know, no one said, you need to throw it over there. No, God shows you. You see it. You hear it because he wants you to do something about it. So what you see, if, you're, if you see something that you would say that's not God's will in your life, that you don't see that this is what he said was his will, then, then put up the sign again and stand by it. And the next time that one of those uh, you know, little imps comes running by, take that thing and tell it, where, t- speak directly to it. Speak directly to Satan. Well, you know, I just, that will just make me look weird. Where does that come from? I don't say, didn't say be weird. And I didn't say even, and you know, a lot of our prayer needs to be done in a closet. Because there's some things that you need to be doing in prayer that you probably shouldn't do in public. There's some boldness. There might be some straight up authority that you're going to take in your closet. You might like be spraying Like you might be spitting. You know when you get so mad at your kids that just. (laughs) That wasn't me. That was you. I just was, you know, that was. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) And you just. (laughs) Like you got to get in that closet. And use those spears. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father, thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for coming to us today for being a teacher. Ah. You're such a great teacher. You always tell us that we can. (laughs) You always show us how. You're always there to guide us and help us steady our hand. You're there to remind us of the words that, that you've spoken to us. You're there to strengthen us. Lord, I thank you for opening our eyes concerning the fellowship and the advancement concerning your kingdom. Open our eyes to see what we hold. And this morning we just say, yes, we can, yes, we will. Be people of prayer. People that recognize 
that we require your assistance. So Lord, this morning we just, we just bow with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. We lift our hands to you and we just tell you, Lord, we need your assistance. I don't want to be self-sufficient. I want to do it with you. I want to face the impossibilities because there's nothing impossible with you, Lord. Thank you. I, I just tell you, I want to do it with you. Thank you. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you've never surrendered to Him as Lord of your life, before you go today, right now, would be a great time to make a decision to follow Christ, to surrender your life. If that's you this morning and you're here, lift your hand. If you're online, right here, right where you're sitting, I just invite you to pray a prayer of dedication, to put a spear in the ground, a stake in the ground once and for all today that I am God's. The Bible says it's very simple. You, you believe in your heart and you speak with your mouth. That's, that's, that you believe in your heart and you release with your mouth this, that spear, that stake in the ground that you're a child of God today. And just, if that's you, just do this with me. Just say, Father, today I give you my heart. Today I surrender my life to you. I believe that you sent your son Jesus and that you paid a price for all my sins so that I could come. I believe that Jesus is living today and interceding on my behalf. You are. I establish today, I put a stake in the ground that you are my Lord and you are my Savior. 